Uh, salutations tubers, welcome back to the layout room for this, a part 5 of my History and O-Gauge series. This time around we should be covering clockwork O-Gauge trains. Kind of taking a little step back in time before we jump ahead to the future for our conclusion. Uh, so I guess I should cut right to the point. What is clockwork? Well, clockwork trains are trains that are powered by little clockwork mechanisms, not unlike a mechanical clock. And it really boils down to you put the key inside, wind it up, it tightens a spring like this one, and you release the brake, and that spring will power these gears and make the wheels turn around. It's perhaps the original system of powered model trains. Up there with live steam, but that's going to be a different kettle of fish. We'll be covering that in a different video when we jump up a gauge. But yeah, short of actually pu pushing it around like this on the floor with a pull string, Clockwork was the first powered system for model train trains that ran on their own instead of you having to, you know, give them a, give them a push. So this is by no means going to be a comprehensive list. This is mainly just going to show off the Clockwork items I have here in the collection. Uh, it's a bit of a niche thing in O-Gauge today, but there's still some people who enjoy collecting and running clockwork. I mainly got it because of the novelty factor. I saw one once on uh, James May's Top Toys, if anybody's familiar with the program, where the Top Gear presenter covers all the toys. And in that particular video, he covered this little chap. Or one that like it anyway, and an, for some strange reason, I thought, I have got to get a clockwork train. I just absolutely have to get one. So, one thing led to another, and <laughs> kind of snowballed. So, kick things off, we'll start with this little one right here. This is a Marks clockwork train, produced about the 1970s or so. Marks made these in... Uh, concert with their electric model trains in O-Gauge and these remain pot in the clockwork trains also referred to as the mechanical trains or mechanical train sets were popular because they were a bit less expensive and they gave you a lot of play value if uh, my personal recommendation if you're going to want to get into clockwork in O-Gauge today and you're looking to can you know, stay under budget you want to start with one of these because all the rest of them a little hard to come by can get a bit expensive but these these are still widely available not a lot of money and good little mechanisms inside I haven't had to do a whole lot of work to keep this one going I mean in operation it's about as simple as a simple does you take the key right here it should be mentioned that Keys in clockwork trains are not exactly universal. For every different locomotive I have, just about every one of them takes its own key, unless it's made by a similar manufacturer, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Very important, keep a hold of these, because they're not made anymore. There are some reproductions out there, and there are some ones available in places like eBay, or I guess you could get really crafty in the blacksmith shop and make one of these. But I would recommend, if you get one of these, Get a little box somewhere where you keep your O-Gauge trains and keep your keys. Because, you know, if you don't have the key, whoopsie, you're going to be pushing it backwards to get it wound up. And it, it works, but it's not exactly ideal. But anyway, it goes in a little slot like so. Get a few cranks. Make sure our track's clear. Push on the little neck and watch her go. <laughs> Figures. This one. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. There she goes. There you go. Usually, when I run this locomotive, I tend to put a Marks electric train tender on it because. This particular plastic tender is so light, and I've tried every kind of way I can think of. Every time it hits the switches on my layout, it goes boom, 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 and tends to fly off. But I keep it because it came with the uh, set. So I guess here after a while, 
after we get the tail end of the video when I start really getting to running these things, I will put the mark extender on. We'll try pulling some heavier rolling stock with it. Now as to power, clockwork trains are kind of variable just as all the different manufacturers are sort of variable. Some are really, really powerful. And you essentially got to overload them a little bit on a tight little layout like this. Because particularly at these turns, they have a tendency to want to fly off if they go too fast. Uh, not really designed, I guess you could say, for an 027 layout. But it's what I got to work with. And so, you know, practice makes perfect. And yes, before anybody asks, they have gone off and it makes my heart jump into my throat every single time. Another big maker of clockwork was Hornby. As I mentioned before, this is kind of the one that really sparked the interest, though this is not my first clockwork train. It was made by Meccano Limited in England. This particular model was made in the post-war period, though there were examples which were virtually identical to this made during the pre-war period. And in fact, Meccano kept making these all the way till uh, I think it was in 66 when they folded, when trying bought them out. I, mean, I guess I need to watch my own series. But uh, for my money, these things are the most charming little toys ever made. And I'm really a big fan of these. And I'm really into British trains, so go figure. Um, pretty well kept to the same basic. Here's the first one I ever got. This one was bought from a set in Canada. A little rough, but still runs really nice. Um, same basic mechanism. By the time they started making these in the post-war period, they pretty well had dispensed with all the different variations in mechanism. I think they had a 440 and a 460 that they made. But by the end of it, it was pretty well the same four-wheel mechanism. So I have several different variations of these, but the big variation, I guess you could say, would be paint, because under the hood they're basically the same. I have present three. I've got the British Railways version, and i got the LMS version, and we got the LNR version, but under the hood they're mechanically identical. But what mechanics? I mean the mechanisms in these things are so well made and so precise it just floors me. So definitely worth having if you can track them down. The best way I would recommend if you're looking for one of these is to go on eBay. Look under the International tab. But uh, be ready for some sticker shock. Because <laughs> these things ain't exactly cheap. And if you want to get into the electric Hornby trains, which are virtually identical to this, but have electric motors in them, uh, get ready for even more sticker shock. That's kind of why I went for my... Uh, Thomas and James conversions for having British style locomotives because they're so expensive. Moving right along, we have this little beauty over here. This was made by Chad Valley, or made for Chad Valley, I should say, and a uh, little bit of explanation of what that is. Chad Valley is a toy store chain over in England. Kind of like a vintage Toys R Us almost in a way. They're still in business but they don't do clockwork o gauge trains anymore. So mainly it was after this one because it was a 440. Bit of a fan of 440 so kind of lucky to have it in the collection. Good little runner. Next on the list, a uh, question you might want to ask, well, do, since these things are so wonderful, do they still make them? Yes and no would be the answer I would give to that question. Uh, they tend to be made kind of sparingly these days, mostly as collector's pieces or reissues of old models. That's what these two little ones here in the background are. These are repro these these two are reproductions of Hornby trains, but they're made by a company called Hachette. Uh, kind of a little known side note, 
is that back in the day Hornby actually had a factory over in France and they made French style trains by redressing the English ones. In fact, this particular this particular one is actually one of the French versions. This is the, these two are reproductions. I like to run them. They're very pretty. The one thing they tend to get wrong these days is the clockwork mechanism. Is because they're cheap and they're made in China. I would hazard to guess. So they're not as powerful and they don't run as long as the old mechanisms, which are absolutely superb. So if you have an old one really worth taking care of it specifically for that reason so one of the things you need to do is to lubricate them we'll cover that here in a second because these modern ones they got plastic gears and the main springs aren't quite as good so but i still like them i still like to run them but definitely will agree that the old ones are much much better so, beyond the obvious, one of the big things you need to do if you want to run these things instead of just putting them up on the shelf is to lubricate. So all the little gears need a drop of, I would say, a light machine oil. Three in one works very well. And the springs need a little touch of a graphite style grease in between the blades here on the side to keep the spring from rusting and end. Another big care tip is not to overwind them because if you break the spring, that's pretty well game over. You can get them remade. Some people are selling reproduction springs, but taking them apart is a palaver, and the general consensus I found is take care of what you got, don't overwind it, and when you're done running it, make sure to let the spring unwind all the way, and once it's done unwinding all the way, don't go pushing it along the track like this because you're going to overflex the spring and it doesn't do them any favors. But other than that, spectacular little engines. Absolutely delight to play with. And I mean, I guess I'm easily amused, I suppose. But I can sit here in the layout room and just run these things round and round and round the track all day long for hours and hours and hours. And I mean, it's just, I guess, just the novelty of not needing any fuel, not needing any batteries, not needing to plug something in the wall, just stick the key in, give it a good crank, and let her rip. So I guess without further ado, until next time, I mean the video's not quite over, I'm going to be showing them all running in turn, but enough of me yakking anyway. Uh, next time around we'll, we'll be doing the future Vogue Age. So until then, sayonara. Gonna make it? Nope. That's one thing I forgot to mention about clockwork. You have no throttle control. It basically, when you let it go, it's going at full power, and when it runs out, it runs out. Kind of like a fireless locomotive in real life. They got a tendency to stop on the other end of the yard from where the boilers are. Boiler in this case being my key arm. So what happens in that case? Get the old, old person gripper, handy for reaching things on the other side of the layout. And we give it a little pull. Oh, try not to come off the rails. Easy does it, easy does it. And at least get it into range where you can go grab it by hand. So, 
pardonnez-moi. Excusez moi. Ah. ah, sacré bleu. Yeah, I'll do. There we go. Next. See what I meant about modern motors? Sound and fury signifying nothing. Oh well, nobody's perfect. Let's see if we can give her a little more, a little more goo. What's in here somewhere? Got them in here somewhere. Time to get desperate. Remember if this takes the Hornby key or the other one. Oh, Hornby key. Third one lucky. <laughs> Another problem if you overload them, they'll stop. Let's take a couple off, see what that does. Apologies for the technical difficulties. 
It's another kind of finicky one. if you got it in the right gear. There she goes. Be a bit of a boop, otherwise it'll go too fast. We'll always hang some more curves on the back end too. Another thing you gotta watch out for sometimes the couplings will slip and you do not want this thing doing a somersault off one of the turns. And while we're here, add a little more weight.
Okay. Try that again, shall we? Take two. Put a little too much on. Take one off, I guess. Okay. The thing about these Hornby engines is they have forward, neutral, and reverse. Kind of like a proto Lionel in a way. Not every clockwork hornby had forward and reverse, but most of them did. accelerating. single drop of electricity to run the locomotives. How's that for eco-friendly? See you next time folks. <laughs>